Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I am excited to share with you an herbal bread recipe. Herbal breads are a really fun way to add magic just to general everyday things. You can be really careful and concise about what you add, add things for specific purposes, and you can get really, really creative with them as well. And so I thought I would share with you today one of my all-time favorite bread recipes. It's really simple and just really delicious. Baseline, I use it all the time, and you can exchange any of the herbs added here for, well, anything or nothing. It's just really delicious and uh, goes well with just about everything, so I hope you enjoy. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Brightland. Brightland is a female-founded olive oil company. It's consciously made and family-run on farms in California, always of the most recent harvest, which is clear. It is so fresh and green and so tasty. There's something really herby about it. It tastes like spring. The first bite I had, I couldn't believe it. And now that we're kind of in the last drags of winter, it feels amazing to kind of have that flavor. It's giving me a lot of new energy for this rest of the season. Did you know that most store-bought olive oils are cut with untraceable lower quality oils just to cut costs? That wasn't something I could have ever imagined until I tried this olive oil and I've been blown away. It feels crazy that olive oil can be this good. I've been using it a ton on pastas and breads, specifically the bread I'm sharing in this video, and it is so amazing. It really brings it up to this next level, and it really helps because I ended up forgetting one of the ingredients and helps to add that flavor back on in. Plus, using it has made me really excited to get back in the kitchen and cooking, especially now that I'm in such a busy phase of my life. So if you're hoping to kind of step up your meals a little bit, get excited to be back in the kitchen, or maybe even gift this to a loved one, I think it would make a great gift for someone who loves to cook or, well, is a foodie. And it's also good for those who maybe are a little bit difficult to get gifts for. This is something I really enjoy, and I'm sure a lot of you would enjoy it too because it doesn't really get much better than high quality and locally sourced from California family farms. So find out more about Brightland's high quality products by clicking the link down below. You can also get 10% off through this link, which I think is a fantastic deal. So with that, thank you so much Brightland for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. Alrighty, let's get into it, shall we? So for this recipe, you'll need two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast, plus one teaspoon of sugar, one and a fourth cup of warm water. Then you'll need your herbs. Start with four to six cloves of garlic chopped, which I accidentally forgot to add. <laughs> Don't be like me, remember this. This is part of what makes the recipe so delicious. <laughs> you'll also need one teaspoon of dried rosemary, one teaspoon of dried basil, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and of course, one and a half teaspoons of salt. Then you'll need one fourth cup of Parmesan, and of course, two and a half cups of bread flour more or less depending on climate, and you can use all-purpose flour if you'd like. Once again, don't forget the garlic like I did. It adds so much to this bread, but luckily I was gifted some garlic olive oil, so now we're all good. Ended up working out in the end for me here, and it could for you as well. You'll also need bowls, a spoon, a cloth, and a Dutch oven. The Dutch oven isn't necessary, but it does really help to make the bread have a nice crunchy outside. To make this bread, it's very, very simple. Simply begin by combining the yeast, sugar, and warm water. Make sure the water is about 100 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. This way the yeast will uh, activate, but not be killed off by too much heat. Once you get it all added together, give it a quick mix and cover with a towel. Leave it to rest here and get all activated for five minutes. Usually I just spend this time getting all of my ingredients together. Once the five minutes are up, add in all your herbs and the salt and give it a good mix together. If you're doing this with some magical intentions, make sure to add those in now. This is one of the best times to really put that energy into the dough and the bread. Well, it's not quite dough yet, but soon it will be. Once you've got that all nice and mixed together, add in the flour and parmesan. I tend to add a little bit of flour first and then all of the parmesan, get that all together, and then just add the flour very slowly. Making sure to combine it all together before adding any more. Mm -hmm. 
slowly it will start to form a nice gooey bread ball. You don't need it to be perfect and easy to touch. It's okay if it's pretty sticky still. Once it's all come together, tip it out onto a floured surface, coat it in flour, it doesn't have to be perfect, and then pop it into a greased bowl, cover with a towel, and allow it to rise in a warm place for an hour. It ended up sitting on my lap while I worked on writing because that was the warmest place by the heater. <laughs> Whatever works. Once the hour is up or it's doubled in size, tip it onto a floured surface and begin shaping the dough. To do this, pull in the corners to the center and just kind of keep it going till it gets pretty tight. Don't punch down the dough, you don't need to knead it, just pull it into shape. Usually it's really sticky to begin with and it can help if you wet your fingers with a bit of water and it's important to make sure the surface stays pretty well floured. Once it's all formed together, it's no longer sticky and it bounces when you press your finger into it. Place it back into the grease bowl, cover it with the towel, and allow it to rise for another 30 minutes. During this time, I like to preheat the oven. It needs to be at 460 degrees Fahrenheit. And make sure, if you're using a Dutch oven, to pop it in there now. Once the 30 minutes are up, the oven is up to temperature and the Dutch oven is all warmed. Take out the Dutch oven and place your bread into it. Usually I do kind of a bad job of shaping it and I end up with a football shaped bread, but you do what you can. It's not easy to move once it's in there, so just get it in there and put the lid back on and pop it in the oven. Bake it covered for 30 minutes and then uncovered for about 10. Sometimes it doesn't need to be in the oven uncovered, sometimes only five minutes, and sometimes even 20. Really just Bake it till it looks nice and browned on top. Then take it out, let it cool, and enjoy. Like I said, this bread is delicious everywhere and it's really a very big staple in my household here. It's super delicious, super easy, it doesn't take a lot of time or resources, and I really enjoy it. It's very versatile and you can add a lot to it. Plus, it's a great baseline for anything like olive oil. So with that, I hope you enjoy, and thank you once again to Brightland for sponsoring. If you haven't seen my other channel, I'd recommend checking it out. There I share vlogs of my day-to-day -day life, more magic, herbalism, and all that good stuff. And I know it's not for everyone, but if you can, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, and a ton of other fun things. It's really what keeps things going over here, and I couldn't be doing this without you guys, so thank you so much. It means the world to me. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.